Hey Skywatchers, this week we listened to a presentation by Pauline Cantwell titled The Wild Cards in Climate Change. Cantwell focused on climate change issues not being discussed in the mainstream media, including the history of manipulation of weather and climate, the economic and social impacts of weather modification, weather as a weapon, and the dangers of climate mitigation. It was a heavy spray day, and we were glad to see fellow Skywatchers in the room. It was really a fantastic uh, presentation. Listen to the whole thing. Pauline details the scope of these operations. She passed out lots of information to the people who were attending, including a list of 66 weather modification programs going on. And it was just a startling reality to comprehend. Now, Pauline has represented Peace Action, the nation's largest grassroots peace organization at the United Nations, uh, since 1994. She also helped form the Peace Caucus there and has been the convener since 95. She led caucuses in Copenhagen, Denmark in 95, at the World Summit on Social Development in Istanbul, Turkey in 96, and at the Habitat II Summit and in Johannesburg, South Africa, at the World Summit on Sustainable Development 2002. She's someone the Skywatchers are really lucky to have on their side. So let's have a listen. As I said earlier while I was waiting on everybody to come, instead of just talking on one topic today, which would be weather as a weapon, I wanted to introduce a broader range of topics. So I'm going to be speaking approximately 30 minutes. I do have a Tesla watch, and this does bring us into Tesla technology. And I will be watching the time so I don't bore you and run you off the first time you come. I'll be talking first on the history of the manipulation of weather and climate, and second, weather as a weapon, and third, the economic and social implications of weather modification and the dangers of climate mitigation, it's particularly the cloud cover and dumping iron filings in the ocean. So the first quote I want to use is from Secretary of Defense William Cohen, 1997, at a conference in Athens, Georgia on terrorism. Others are engaging even in eco-terrorism, whereby they can alter the climate, set off volcanoes, earthquakes, remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. It's real, and therefore we must intensify our efforts. Environmental warfare is defined as the intentional modification or manipulation of the natural ecology, such as climate and weather, earth systems, such as the ionosphere, magnetosphere, tectonic plate system, which of course creates earthquakes, and or the triggering of seismic events, such as earthquakes, to cause intentional physical destruction to an intended target, geophysical or population location, as part of the strategic or tactical war. There is a long history of the military's intention to undertake environmental engineering, especially to gain control of the weather. One of the first was Project SEAL, a top secret, top secret experiment conducted off New Zealand coast to perfect a tidal wave bomb, nicknamed a tsunami bomb, 1944-1945, the same time the nuclear weapons were being developed. Project Cirrus, C-I-R-R-U-S, the first known American attempt to control a hurricane. Ill-fated joint project by the U.S. Navy and a group of scientists from General Electric, October 13, 1947, resulted in a hurricane making landfall near Savannah, Georgia. Uh, they quickly kind of locked up the records on that one. Artificial Cloud nu Nucleation Project, AEN, from 1951 through 1953. The U.S. Navy and Air Force conducted numerous and systemic cloud seeding experiments in southwestern Washington. Project Skyfire. In 1960 and 61, the U.S. Army pursued lightning supp suppression through experiments where millions of tiny needles were released to seed clouds. 
They explored the potential of using shaft to pull the teeth of, the th of, the, of a thunderstorm, launched rockets to trigger lightning discharges, the Soviet programs to create clear skies for May Day parades, and I was hoping one of my Russian friends would be here today to tell us about some of those programs, but she will probably be here later. Project Woodpecker. Have you, any of you heard of this? Yes. Okay. I just heard the name, though. This is a Soviet system. The electron cyclotron resonance heating method now being used to alter the Earth's magnetic field in order to modify weather, create or trigger earthquakes and volcanoes, spread viruses, create the phenomenon known as electromagnetic pulse, and to modify behavior control among the populations. These weapons have a great mind control aspect. They can project sounds in people's heads, which are now being commercialized. There's an advertising company mm -hmm. using it in New York right now. Uh, they can project sounds, voices in your head, and this is being used by an um, advertising company in Manhattan later. I'm only going to talk about the weather aspects because you can knock out any airplane, any place, any time. If you just know the co coordinates, it's directed energy weapons. So they have many, many aspects, but for today we will concentrate on the weather aspects. This Russian system was turned on July 4th, 1976, our bicentennial. The Russians had made advances in mending the all-important jet stream that sweeps across Siberia to set global wind patterns. The system is named for the hammering sound that it makes on shortwave radio, so every shortwave ra radio operator in the world knows what woodpecker is when you talk about it. So when the Russians turn on their system, you can hear it. It's in the 3 to 30 megahertz range that it's heard. By using explosive devices in the jet stream, the scientists are trying to make it dip and rise in a wave that could replace the frigid Siberian winters with milder air from the south. Now notice this started in 1976. The Russians started working with Nikola Tesla, who lived in New York City. He was Serbian. He set off many earthquakes, in uh, small earthquakes in New York City. He built a tower on Long Island. He said he could get energy free from the earth and transmit it without power lines. And he did work with the Russians. The English and Americans refused to work with him. He developed a weapon that he said he could knock down planes 200 miles out from a coastline, basically the curvature.